In this video, I'll be going over the plot reference frames function that I've been using in the numerical methods with Python series. And here's what I have it posted on a GitHub repository that I'm calling Astrodynamics with Python. And I, I think I'm going to post some more things in here as well. But I'm not going to post everything because I think it's still up to the viewer, you, uh, who are watching to actually go through and type out all the Python that I'm showing yourself. Because debugging is a really big part of writing software and it's incredibly important and where you spend a lot of your time realistically is just debugging. So here it is. And I think I'll make a video just introducing this GitHub repository once it's more developed. But where I have that plotting function is under Python tools and plotting tools. And here it is where I have these few things and then plot reference frames. So this is where it is. And now I'm going to switch over to Sublime and a plot and go line by line through everything that's going on here. So here's the same thing that I had in the last video in video nine of this series where I just have this plot here that I made just from getting the transpose or getting the Euler angle to matrix representation of this Euler angle sequence describing a Molnia orbit. And again, I'll have a, a link in the description to the previous video, but in this one, I'm just going to go over the plotting tools, uh, the plotting function. So here we have plot reference frames and I'm going to go, I'm going to have this side by side just to show what everything means as far as what's going on here. I'll make this bigger. So plot reference frames is just this function that I have, which takes in some frames, arguments, and then don't worry about these vectors, plots, and planes. This is something extra that I've done. But basically in this case, when we call plot reference frames, we call it pass in the frames, which frames is a list of three by three NumPy arrays, which in this case represent reference frames or rotation matrices, where, the, where we're going to be plotting the columns of these as the basis vectors. Or in this case, we call it spice2m and then just pass in a list with this rotation matrix and its transpose, pass it in there, and then some config dictionary that overrides the default arguments that are in the plotting tools function. I'll get into that next. But basically just have some stuff like frame colors, which is uh, M is for magenta and C is for cyan that I have here. Uh, the frame labels like oil2m, transpose, and inertial is um, the default one I have. Azimuth and elevation are just the beginning the beginning view of how you're looking at the plot, which I use more when I'm actually saving the file versus just showing it like I'm doing here and then show equals true just to show it and then just plot it. So then getting into this. So what I like to do is have this dictionary that represents all the default arguments into a function. So I'd rather do this than have an endless line of default arguments into a function. Like here, I already have three and it's kind of a lot, but imagine having say like 25 of these just all in a row as arguments into a function. So instead of doing that, I like to use this default default dictionary and then pass in some some other dictionary that's going to override any defaults that you want overridden like this and then override them. So then for key in key, so for key in args.keys where args is a dictionary you pass in, override what you have in the default dictionary with what you passed in. That's what that's doing. And for me, this is just a lot more convenient to use than to have, again, that endless line of, of optional arguments. So I'm going to go over through these um, as they come up in the, in the actual function. So getting into this to create a 3D plot in matplotlib called plt.figure with a fig size, uh, which in this case, fig size, I just have it to default 1212. And then fig.add subplot to create an axis object, 111 projection equals 3D to make it 3D. The zeros uh, is not too important, or it is kind of important. So it's using the quiver command to tell where the quivers should start. So getting into this, so for frame in frames, so when you pass in frames, it's a list of three by three NumPy arrays. So for each one of those arrays, we're going to plot it. So axe.quiver, and we're plotting by columns. And I put this this little comment in here because it was a bit confusing for me because when you want to plot all three in just one command, you pass them in by rows because what this axe.quiver is doing is the first three arguments are the positions of the X, the X's, the Y's, and the Z's of where these quivers should start. So where these arrows should start. And in this case, we want to start at the origin, which is why they're all zero. So they all start at the zero, zero, zero point right here. And then you want to pass in the X coordinates of each one. So that's why you pass it in by rows, because this is the X coordinates of all three vectors. So the X, the Y, and the Z, their X coordinates, their Y coordinates, and their Z coordinates. But we're plotting them as columns. So we're plotting the columns of the matrices. But in the quiver command, you need to pass in this array by rows. It's kind of confusing, so that's why I put that comment there. 
And then you want to pick what color you want, which is passed in through frame colors, what label it should have. So right here, so the color is in this case for the oil 2M is magenta. The frame label is oil 2M. And then Z order, you don't have to worry about, but basically Z order is just when you have a 3D plot and you want to project it onto 2D, like we see on our screens, some things have to go in front of another. So then the higher the number is for Z order, the more in front they'll be. Um, I don't really use it in this case, but I use it more for 3D plotting functions for the orbits. And then if args vector text, so th this is just a labeling this X, this Y, and the Z, the same thing for all of them. That's what that vector text is. And then frame times equals the args out frame text scale, which is just default to 1.1. Because if I didn't do this, then say the Z would be like right on top of the arrow and then it just be covered up. So that, that's why I just multiply it by some value. And then just using the axe.txt command to tell it where I want it to be, label it X, Y, Z, all that stuff. And then N plus equals one. Because as we're going through these, so for each frame, say, N will start at zero, so the zero with frame in that list, the next will be one, so the first frame in that list, which in this case, the zero is oil 313, and then the second one is oil 313 transpose. And then args, if args base frame, so basically, so you don't have to pass it in if you just wanna make a base frame, which is the white frame here, which I have set to inertial. It's just the X, Y, and Z, again, just zeros, the same thing with the quiver, and then identity, it's just one zero 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 one zero 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 one, which is just plots, the base frame in this case and most of the times it's just the inertial frame that i want to have and the same thing with color and label where the base color is uh defaulted to white and the base label is defaulted to inertial and then base frame is defaulted to true so i usually just want to put a reference you know some inertial frame xyz i usually just always want it so i'll just have it by default to always do it same thing with the vector text is the same thing and then for this one this isn't as important because I just did this because I made some other plots like the Keplerian orbital elements or Euler angles video. I made it using this function of that plot uh, because I wanted to have three separate vectors which represent the XYZ coordinates of the perifocal frame of the Molniya orbit, but I wanted to be different colors. So I define each vector by itself. So it's the same thing for vector and vectors where vectors is just a list and it's defaulted as empty. So for vector and vectors, just axe.quiver again start at the origin and then wherever the x y and z coordinates are same thing with the colors labels vector text all the same thing and same thing with the plane i i just i used it for that one plot and i haven't used it again but it's there if you want to use it and then set x label set y label set z label this is all pretty standard stuff from the arguments so these are defaulted as just x y and z right here x label y label z label and then if args.legend, so if you want to have a legend, call axe.legend, which is what this thing is here, just labels all the plots. If args no axes, axe.set axis off. So this makes it so there's no X, Y, and Z like coordinate frame in the background. So that's what that's doing when I have no axes. I just call it no axes, um, which I have it defaulted as true. And then the next thing is axes no fill, which I defaulted as false. So if you want to have the axes, but you don't want a gray background, you just want a black background with a white grid, which represents a coordinates um, system, then you can use axes no fill, which again, makes it from a gray background to just all black. So it doesn't fill, I mean, from the map palette perspective, it doesn't fill the pain. Um, I'm getting, I just Googled this just because I wanted to use it. Uh, it's not like I just knew how to do this. Just most of the time you just Google stuff, you can figure stuff out because map outlet has pretty good documentation. And then last thing, or one of the last things here, azimuth and elevation. So if you want a specific view, you can pass in the azimuth and elevation of the view. So if you can see here, as I'm moving this around, on the bottom right of the plot, you can see the azimuth and, oh, it doesn't show, but when I'm moving it around on the bottom right, it says azimuth and elevation. So if you have a certain view that you like, and then you wanna save this to a file, so save it to an image, you can rotate it around, find a view that you really like, and then take note of the azimuth and elevation at the bottom, pass those into the function so it'll start in that view and then if you want to save it you call that and then if args.show which i'm doing right now just call plt.show which makes this so i can move it around and then if i call if i pass in a file name where i have file name set to false as a default but if i pass in a string into file name it means that i want to save it to a certain file name so then i just call plt.savefig uh, save it to that file name dpi i think is or i believe it's dots per inch so basically how many dots per inch you want basically the 
the granularity of the image. So basically the higher number you have, the more high quality it's going to be. And the bigger the file size is going to be as well. So called DPI, uh, I have it defaulted as 300 in the dictionary and then just print it out. And then this is good practice to do plt.close because if you want to make say 30 plots at a time, which I do for the animations, um, eventually matplotlib has an upper limit of how many uh, figures you can have open at once. So it's good, it's just good practice that plt.close whenever you're done with a figure, just close it. So that's pretty much it for this plotting function. Um, let me know if you have any questions about it. Uh, there's a bit of stuff in here and not all of it is super necessary, but I find this function to be really useful and I've used it a lot in the videos that I've made. Also with the reference frames animations, the animator calls this function. There's kind of a wrapper around this function to call this function many times, say like a hundred times uh, it's for an animation. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions or comments about uh, this function uh, if there's anything i didn't explain very clearly and yeah that's pretty much it so leave any questions in the comments and thank you for watching